Word of God says, Strength and honor are her children. Talks about the virtuous woman here. And she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Father, we praise you. We thank you that we can be together, Lord, today as your work, as your people. And even, dear God, recognize our mothers. We pray that each one of them you will bless. And so with all the rest of those who are under the sound of this preaching, dear God, be praised, be glorified. Help us to have willing hearts and minds to accept your truth and learn. And be, dear God, as people who would be according to your word. And bless this message, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We are a church that... Uh, honors those who should be honored. In our Sunday school time, I even pointed out that even the Romans 13 says, give honor to whom honor is due. And that does not just simply apply to giving honor to people uh, within the powers that be, but we give honor to whom honor is due, even especially applying to our mothers and our mothers. I mean, our fathers. So we honor mothers and we honor fathers. And by the way, June would be the month when we will have our Father's Day. So you might uh, one day get ready with that. Exodus twenty six twelve says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. In Deuteronomy five sixteen, Honor thy father and thy mother. And then these two references were referred to in Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 2 to 3. And Paul says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. The wise man in Proverbs 19, 26 says, He that wasteth his father... And chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. In Proverbs 20:20, 20, 20, the Bible says, Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Proverbs 23:22, hearken unto thy father that begat thee. And despise not thy mother when she is old. Now listen. We all can say we have moms who are not perfect. But that does not follow. It doesn't follow that we all have the right to despise them. Especially when they're old. Ulitin ko yan sa Tagalog. Kahit na ang ating mga magulang ay hindi perfecto. Kahit na hindi natin inaasahan na maging gayon sila, kahit na ang tingin natin sa kanila ay hindi maalam bilang mga nanay at bilang mga tatay, hindi rin natin dapat sila alisan ng galang. Naanuwaan ba natin yan? Wala kahit sinong may karapatan na alisan ng paggalang at pagkilala ang ating mga magulang, however imperfect they may be. Alam niyo, minsan, may mga magulang na aayaw sa kanilang mga anak pumunta sa ganitong church. Pero saan ka ba nang makakita ng mga katuruan, katulad nito? Hindi nila naunawaan na kinakailangan nila ng ganitong church para maturuan ang lahat sa pamilya na kung anong maaari sila bilang mga anak. Tama ba? In Proverbs 30, 11, look at this verse. There is a generation that curseth their father and does not bless their mother. 
Let's pray that we would not be in that generation. Although, alam niyo mga kapatid, we are actually in that generation. But somehow we pray na hindi kasama itong tayo dito sa gayong klaseng generasyon. We owe a lot to mothers. Oh yes, we owe a lot to mothers. Alam niyo, as I was preparing this message this morning, I keep remembering my own mother. I thank God for my mom. You know, when I was, I was told that when I was one year old, it was the time when my mother was so sickly and uh, one of her kidneys was removed because of tuberculosis of the kidney. And so, uh, until my mother died, you know, less one year, she only had one kidney. And so she had to be so disciplined in uh, taking water, you know. Pero hindi complications sa kidney ang kinamatay ng nanay. Ang kinamatay niya ay pneumonia dahil sa complication ng ALS. And uh, nung maliit ako, mas maraming panahon na ako'y nakay tatay, kasama ni tatay, going around because my nanay was so sickly. She's been bed. She's being in bed always. No? Parang lumaki ako na palaging may sakit si nanay. Ako may sakitin din ako. Pareho kami sakitin. But you know what? My mom has shown sa aming lahat how to, how to be a mother who knew the Lord. When my mother got saved, when she became a Christian, she was, of course you know this, all of you in Lighthouse know the story of nanay. When she became a Christian, she was not just ostracized, she was actually disinherited by my grandparents. And they did an affidavit, not disowning, but disinheriting my mother. They took away her inheritance, and from there on, since my mother became a Christian, we never came to know my grandfather and grandmother in Bicol, in Iriga, until they were on their bedside. But then we praise God that they also came to know the Lord. And my mother showed a lot, extended a lot of prayers for her hometown. And now in Iriga stand several lighthouse churches simply because of the faith of my own mother. I believe that uh, we are what we are because also of the faith of my mom. Of course, it was our dad, our tatay, who really taught to us many things from the Word of God. But it was Nanai who turned into practical things what faith should be. I still remember as a young boy, we would be gathered by Nanai, and Tatay would always be out preaching in many occasions, and we would be gathered, Siti Benny, Si Hernes, and myself, wala pa si Ira noon, Rhoda would be there, and uh, she would make us to read the Tagalog Bible. No? Ikot yan, ikot, isang verse kada ikot, until we get to finish the whole chapter. I still remember how she would dictate to me all the verses that I should memorize. I still remember how that she would come and teach me songs, and then I would come up and sing some numbers with my mother, you know, coaching me, you know, from a distance. I still remember singing that song as a small boy, you know, in the song, Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. And then I forgot the next line. I forgot the next line. And my mother would dictate the next line. And everybody would laugh because, you know. I still remember as grade 5 student, I was, I was choir director of the Burgos Choir. Two classes, sections 1 and 2, and I was the choir director. And when I saw the audience, how, you know, big audience there, I was afraid to come up and lead the choir. And it was a masterpiece we would be singing. It was the song, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, E-I-E-I-O. I was leading that choir, you know. And I was afraid, ang sabi ko, kaya nanay, nai, takot, ayoko, ayoko. 
I still remember how Nanay gave me 50 centavos to go up and leave. She just knew how to get me going. She understands me. Oh, mothers. You know, I want to I show you a video. Kanina, tinitinan ko yung mga videos sa YouTube. And this video came to me and, you know, I got me to remembering the days when I had Nanay with me. You know, and of course, ganun din naman sa mga anak namin para sa kanilang nanay na si Imelda. Can you show the video, please, yung pangalawa? Life doesn't come with a manual, it comes with a mother. And praise God that we can have the Word of God to teach us how to be moms. I still remember when my children were small. Lahat naman yan, iba-iba ang ugali. Iba-iba ugali ni Rhea, iba ugali ni Ressa, iba ugali ni Rina, lalo na. But you know what? I appreciate my wife for teaching them verses. I still remember Rhea nung araw, nakabuo siya ng isang C90 tape, cassette tape. All verses and all mga nursery rhymes and everything. Ngayon, mga matatanda na yung mga yan. But I just take the Word of God and how the Word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. Because when he is old, they will not depart from it. How can a mom be biblical? What can you see in a mom that's consistent with the word of God? You know, we may have traditions, we may have sabi-sabi sa ating bansa kung paano maging magulang. When these young people were, you know, I officiated the weddings, itong mga ito, si... Glenna, si Jonah, Dana. I try to be very practical when, whenever I officiate wedding ceremonies and uh, I tell them how they should be, not as how, how I perceive they should be, but how they should be according to God's word. And so I say this even to moms today. It's not too late yet. You still can look at the Word of God and see descriptions of how we should be as mothers. Amen? And how you should be as mothers. 
At siguro next June naman, how you should be as fathers. But see, the Word of God can be applied sa lahat sa atin dito. Ano man ang ating kalalagyan, kaysa lola na tayo, no? o lola ka na, paano ka ba, lola ka sa tuhod, o apo ka sa tuhod, but whatever. No? Siguro meron ka ng apo sa tuhod, or what? Apo ka sa talampakan, and you say, I'm old, I don't need to learn. But hey, for as long as we are in this life, we can look at the Word of God and see truth that we should apply to our lives. And my prayer is this, that our mothers today would be mothers just as how the, the Bible describes mothers should be. And here in our text, no, ang sabi dito sa Proverbs 31, 13 to 22, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She brought, bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hand. She planteth a vineyard. I look at this and I see how mothers would spend their time doing this. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk as purple. In Isaiah 66, 13, as one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. One of the things that God did here is this, as he has given us his word, God uses moms, how they are, so we can better appreciate and understand how God is. Aren't you glad we have the Word of God? Mothers who give comfort. That's how the Word of God describes mothers. Mothers who give comfort. O tama yung sinabi kanina. Life doesn't come with a manual. It comes with mothers. Hindi <laughs> ba? Alala ko ngayon, meron akong diabetes. Pero nung araw, alam nyo, ayoko mang aminin, pero parang spoiled ako ng nanay ko eh. Kasi, wala naman kaming masyadong maraming ulam nung araw. So, ang ginagawa ni nanay, eh, pag walang ulam, no, sa akin yung pinakamasarap. Halimbawa, kapag maglalaga ng buto, di ba, may ano yun, mayroong utak yun, mayroong utak. Bulalo, di ba? Sabi nga nila, you know, kapag ang mukha mo patapon, sana naman yung katawan mo maganda. Para kang hipon. Pwedeng itapon yung ulo, pero panali yung katawan. Mon, galing sa'yo yata yun. Eh. Kapag ang mukha mo ay maganda, pero you know, yung katawan mo pangit, para ka namang lollipop. Pwedeng itapon yung tangkay, pero panalo naman yung candy, di ba? Pero kung ang mukha mo patapon, at ang katawan mo patapon din, sana naman yung utak mo okay, para kang bulalo. <laughs> Naalala ko tuloy yun. Tuloy natin. Paano naman kung ang mukha mo patapon, yung katawan mo patapon, at yung ulo mo, yung utak mo patapon din, sana naman yung kalooban mo okay, para kang buko. Diba? Eh, paano naman po, pastor, kapag yung mukha mo patapon, ha, katawan mo patapon pa rin, ang utak mo patapon, pati ang kaloba mo patapon pa rin. Para kang bugok na itlog. Anyway, whatever. Alam ko nung araw, ano, nire-reserve ni nanay, wag nyo nang, ano, kasi alam nyo, maganda maging bunso. I was the youngest for seven years until Ira came. And I still remember when Ira came, I was seven years old. Pitong taon yung pagitan namin ni Ira. Ewan ko ba sa mga members ng church, pati yung mga young people, ayan Ruben, hindi ka na mahal ni nanay, nandyan na si Ira. Ba't ba ganyan kayo? 
And right at the bedside of Nana, you know, I went to the hospital and Ira was born. I told and asked Nana, Nay, mahal mo ba ba ako? You know. And she had a way of giving answers na hindi magmamaktol. Moms, they give comfort. Tama ba? Can you still give comfort? Minsan siguro kapag matanda na yung mga anak natin, ayaw na natin silang kinokomfort. <laughs> Hindi ba? But you're not done until you're done. Let's just have moms today who would be ready to give comfort the way how comfort should be given by moms. And no matter sometimes na ang ating mga anak ay ganun na lang pasaway, you still need to give them comfort. As God does. In 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I look at the story of the prodigal father. No, not the prodigal father, the prodigal son. But the father of the prodigal. But you know, that story is actually is silent about the mom. Correct? Walang nanay doon. Pero hindi pwedeng walang nanay, hindi ba? I just think that as the father was so forgiving, so was the mom. Tama? I, I think that as the father was so accepting, so was the mother. Di ba? Ang talagang pasaway lang din yung kapatid niya, hindi yung nanay. You know, when the son was coming, and he was coming home, and the father met him with open arms, I believe that so with the mom, and she was just standing behind and ready to accept the child who comes home. You know what, mothers? Get the word of God in your life. And things will get to be in places. Pastor, hindi yung anak ko pasaway. No. Get the word of God in place. Number two. In Proverbs 31, 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Proverbs 31, actually, is something that was taught by mom, by a mother, to King Limuel. And in verse 1, it says, verse, ter, verse 1, it says, the words of King Limuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Look at that. Mothers who teach is how the Word of God describes biblical mothers. Kaya alam niyo dito sa Lighthouse, I do not subscribe to young, very young, no? Na mga ladies to get married. Kung maaari lang sana, if I can put a, an age here, Sabi ko nga sa iba eh, dapat kinakasal kayo, yung bang na-establish yun na ang karir ninyo. Huwag yung kagagraduate lang sa school, magpapakasal na kayo. Naunawaan nyo ba? Okay lang yan na kahit ng mga young ladies dito. no? Matapos kayo mag-aral, makatapos kayo sa eskwelahan, magtrabaho muna kayo and get yourselves established sa career path ninyo. Huwag kayong magmamadaling magpakasal. Oh, Why? You know why? Because you have to, th to get learning. You, get, you must have experience. Not just the verses. You have to know practical life so you can teach these to your children. You have to acquire learning. Amen? Kahit na magpakasal kayo 50. Ah, hindi, wag naman. Diba? 27, okay lang yan. Tama? O ayaw niyo maniwala kayo sa pastor niyo, sinasabi ko sa inyo. Oh. Hindi pa nga kayo matutong mag, 
prito eh. Gusto niya na magpakasal. Pag naguhugas kayo ng pinggan, yung baso, palaging mayroong stain sa ibaba. Nakakalimutan niyo yung pit ng baso sa likod. Ano ba niya man sinasabi ko? Marunong ba kayo magla- maglaba ng kwelyo? Hello? Mamalan siya. Eh, pastor, pangkatulong naman yung sinasabi mo. Eh. Hindi, at least you know you need to do that. Mabuti nga ngayon, may mga diapers. Eh, kami nung araw, Tanungin niyo si Imelda, ako naglalaba ng lampin ng mga bata. Tama ba? Bago ako pumasok, eh siyempre, eh, nung nanganak si Imelda, you know, uh, she had cesarean section. Kami lang dalawa, wala kaming katulong. And before I would go to the office, maglalaba muna ako ng lampin. Puro dilaw pa yun. Naninilaw sa ako. Ano. Alam ko yan. Ako na rin nagpa-plansya ng mga lampin. Sige, mag-contest tayo mga lansya. Baka yung plansya nyo, dalawa liston. Sisiguraduhin ko na ang plansya ko, isa lang ang liston. Learn life so that you may be able to teach children. Why? Because the Bible says mothers must be able to teach. Amen? She openeth her mouth in wisdom. And you know how moms are. Alam nyo, Kahit magtago ka na, ewan ko ba sa mga mothers, no? God provides them with good insights. Oh yes. Kahit palusot ka, hindi ka lulusot minsan sa nanay mo eh. Totoo yan. They have such understanding of situations. You see? Proverbs 1.8 My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. And so when you get married, do not just look forward to being a wife. Look forward to being a mom. And how you may be able to teach your children. Amen. Amen. No, we don't graduate learning sa buhay. You see, biblical moms are moms who get learning and who teach. I admire mothers who will be able to teach their children verses. Rather than, ay yung mga bata natin ngayon, mas memorize pa yung advertisement eh. Correct. Jesus, we pa lang hindi mo na mapamemorize sa anak mo. Ang ikli-ikli na nga nun. Di ba? Sige, pastor, papamemorize ko po yung Esther 8, 9. Hindi mo, haba-haba naman nun. Eh, pamemorize mo na lang yung Psalm 119. No. Lalo na ipamemorize nyo yung mga bagay, yung mga verses, who would really have an impact in their lives. Amen. Oh, yes. I remember Nanay, she would always recite that verse that says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. So we learned how God cares for us. So biblical moms are moms who are able to teach. Get to know God's word, and this will equip you to teach. Amen? Get to know God's word. And you know, I praise God here in Lighthouse, we have faithful moms. At kahit yung mga golden ladies natin dito, they stand up here and memorize chapters. Can you imagine that? Amen? Kaya nga, I'm happy when, you know, we get to have weddings here and they, you get our moms here to be your ninongs and ninangs because they know how to counsel. They know how to teach. Number three, I'll try and be fast here. Proverbs 31, 30. Faith, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feedeth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and look at this, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Biblical moms are just not known for the comfort they, they give. They're not just known 
for the teaching that they do, but they are also known for the works that they do. Amen? Service. Tough job for moms. You think so? Huh? Oh, alam ko ngayon, marami na tayong kung ano-ano mga gadgets to make things easier. Can you ready the first video there? First video. But can you imagine kung paano na lang? Would you apply to be, to take a job that a, a, a mother would, should have? Have you ever considered the job of a mother? Oh, look at this video. Pwede ba kayo mag-apply? Ha? Bilang parang empleyado. Look at this. Second, thank sure. you, sorry. Uh-huh. Hey, hey. Two minutes. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry about hey, that. Hey, Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have you ever done one of these interviews uh, over the camera before? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the job to get started with. It's not just um, a job, it's sort of probably the most important job. Uh, the title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. Responsibilities and requirements are, are really quite extensive. Uh, first category for the requirements would be mobility. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. Uh, uh, okay. That's a lot. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, th is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Uh, I think that's a little intense. No, no not possible. that's crazy. Now this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skill. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. You must be able to wear several hats. Associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is gonna go up, and we demand that. With, with a happy disposition. Uh, that's almost cruel. <laughs> that's almost uh, a very, very sick, twisted joke. Worry about when there's time to sleep or... Oh, no time to sleep. <laughs> yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's, that's inhumane. That's, that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is gonna pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing it for free. Yeah, pro bono, <laughs> completely for free. No. What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and they meet every requirement, oh, don't wow. they? Oh my god. Moms are the best! Yeah, there's no pay. They're 24 hours. They're always there. Now I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah, and what are you thinking about her? I'm thinking about all those nights and everything. Thank you so much for everything you do. I know it doesn't seem like I appreciate all of it, but I definitely do. <laughs> So, Mom, I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. I love you very much. You've been there through thick and thin. My mom is just awesome. She's awesome. Biblical moms are known for their works. Not simply because the world demands it, but it's how the Word of God describes them. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her. 
in the gates. Strength or honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. And finally, no, biblical moms are not just those who extend comfort and who teach and who are known by what they do, by what their job requires. Biblical moms are those who influence by their faith. 2 Timothy 1.5 says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Proverbs even uses the word, The woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Faith, it comes by the word of God. We cannot have faith that comes from our inherent na mga qualities. No, faith comes by God's word. And when you get to know God's word, and when you apply God's word, and you, when you get to know the truth, and when the Bible says there's a Christ that died for you on the cross, there's a God that loves you who sent his only begotten son on the cross and he died for you and he was buried and he rose again. And when you take that and when you take what the word of God says that we are all sinners, we need to have a savior. That's faith. But that's not the end of faith. When we get to know Christ, that's faith. And when we get to apply what the word of God teaches, that's even more faith. You see, Timothy became what he should be, and Timothy became a preacher. Timothy was one who, is, who, who we, we call he's a prodigy of Paul, but he was not what he became, not until Paul said this faith that was seen in your grandmother Lois and in you. It's a must that we would have moms today who know their faith, who can speak of their faith and who can influence their children and those around them. Who can make their faith be known. Because if they don't do, the ads will. The press will. The radio and TV will. The movies will. The neighbors will. The social media will. The school teachers will. The politicians will. The forces of evil in this world will. But if we have moms who would be solid in their faith, that's what we need in moms today. Four things for you. But for moms here today, can you actually pray to God, Lord, let me be a mom described by God's word, that I may comfort my children who need comfort. That I may teach what I should teach as a mother. That I may do what I should do as a mother. Kung kaya nga, ang sabi naman na nakasulatan, dapat hindi idle, eh. hindi mga busy bodies, but silent. Hindi ba? But workers, willing to work. And then of course, let me be a mom na makikita ang aking pananampalataya. So that if my children would get to know the Lord, they will get to know the Lord because of my faith. Amen? And if you have even unbelieving husbands, your unbelieving husbands will get to know Christ because of your faith. It is by your faith that they will get to see and to know Christ. Can you be a biblical mom today? Let's stand and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, that even through the simple message, Lord, that your word can come to us and we may understand how we should be and how mothers should be according to your word. Lord, 
I pray that each mom would have an open heart, Lord, today and come down the altar and give themselves to you, their God, today and be willing to say, Lord, make me a mother who is consistent, consistent, dear God, to your word. Let me extend comfort as how I should, according to how you comfort us, Lord. Let me be a mother, dear God, who will teach because your word has taught me. Let me be a mother, dear God, who would be willing to work because your word has told me and is telling me, dear God, how to really work as your servant. But Lord, best of all, let me be a mother who will reach out to my loved ones and my kids and my children for them to know, to get to know the faith that is in Christ. Let me be a mother who bear these qualities. I pray for each mother, Lord, today. And as every head is...